Good morning to this beautiful, wide, big world. Today, from Pastor John Fisherman Cranwell from the Philippines in Quezon City. And uh, I am teaching from the GRV TV broadcasting station. Uh, and um, Chris is my um, video man here. So thank you again, Chris. And so this morning, I will continue with the importance of church fellowship, the importance of going to church Sundays. Um, it's so important. Uh, I spoke on this last week, but there was not enough time to finish. So today I will continue on the importance, the absolute importance of assembling ourselves together. Okay? So grab hold of your Bibles if you want to follow me in the Scriptures. And we're first of all, we're going to turn to the book of Acts. I call it the book of action. Um, and we're going to have a look in chapter 2, and we're going to go to verses, let me see, uh, 20, 42 to 47. 42 to 47. And they, that is the Christians, you see, in Acts 2 here, prior to these verses, was the day of Pentecost, and when Peter got up and preached the gospel of good news, 3,000 uh, said yes to Jesus and knows their religion and converted and repented from their sins. Okay? And uh, this carries on here. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in prayers. And then fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. This was on the day of Pentecost. It was a radical day. It was a day that uh, God really sent forth His Spirit, and uh, and and the Spirit came inside each one, and they spoke in tongues, a language they didn't have to learn, to give them the power to be His witnesses. Now, all who believed were together and had all things in common. They sold their possessions and goods and divided them amongst all as anyone had need. So they provided for the different needs. Some were poorer, some were richer. Okay? And so they had all things in common. Fear? What did that come from? Because of the mighty miracles and wonders and signs that were happening that these people hadn't seen before. And they were amazed that these ordinary men, these ordinary men were, were delivering them from demons. They, um, they were speaking in tongues. They were baptized in the Holy Spirit. Uh, there was radical, supernatural immediate healings and all these things were happening and so great fear the fear of God okay that's the beginning of wisdom the Bible says and so um, they continuing daily with one accord in the temple in the church building <laughs> breaking bread from house to house they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart it's really nice when the church Fellowships get together and have a meal, isn't it? Praising God and having favour with all the people, and the Lord added to the church daily who were being saved. Added to the church daily. So these uh, new believers were preaching the gospel to their loved ones, to the people they cared for, to strangers, and the church was growing. And that's only chapter 2 of the book of Acts. Okay, now let's turn to Hebrews chapter um, 13 and uh, verse 7 and see what the writer of Hebrews has to say about church fellowship. Okay, remember those who rule over you, who have spoken the word of God to you, whose faith follow considering the outcome of their conduct. And here, uh, the writer is speaking about to consider those who have pastored you, shepherded you, counseled you, looked after you, taught you. And uh, so you've got to consider those. And to consider those, you don't follow them when you go to church. You go to church and worship the Lord in one accord. It's so much nicer than just being on your own. When, when these people who who don't go to fellowship, they, they worship alone. And yes, we, can ha we have our alone uh, f 
fellowship with the Lord, we have our prayers, we have our worship time, we do this at home, that's, that's good. But the thing is to, to gather together on a Sunday and be in one accord and worship together. There's real power in that. And, and, as, and as you have a feeling of belonging to God's forever family, you're there with the other believers. And, and so it's so important to, to get into the, the church building and, and join a service and be part of that service. And, and if you want to be used of God, if you want to rise up in the ranks of um, the different jobs that are done in the church, then you need to be a, a, an attendee on a regular basis. And they'll see how you grow in God, and then they'll see how you can be used. Because the pastors, they've been taught these things and grown up in, in Christ, and they, they know the Bible, and they can see you growing in God, and that you have a potential to do this, do that, or the other. And they'll, they'll point you in that direction. Okay? So consider those um, who rule over you. Okay? So let's have a look now at um, 1 Thessalonians, uh, which is all in the, the New Testament. 1 Thessalonians. And we have a look at chapter 5. How's your Bible reading going, by the way? Because um, a few weeks before, I spoke about the importance of reading the Bible daily. So I'm just asking you, how's your Bible reading going? Are you reading it daily? Are you growing in the things of God? Are you learning about the Lord more and getting closer to Him through reading His Word? Okay? Now, let's have a look at 1 Thessalonians 5, chapter 5, verse 12 and 13. And here we see this um, exhortation of Paul to the Thessalonian church. And we urge you, brethren, to recognize those who labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you. And to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. Be at peace among yourselves. Okay? So here, recognize those who labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you. Here, the pastors, the shepherds of the sheep are encouraging you to grow in the things of God. They're teaching you from the pulpit every Sunday. And if you're missing out on this teaching, well, you say, yes, but we can go online. Yeah, that's okay. But you need to be together, not just online. Um, so get to the church. It's like, for me, online, when we had to, when, we, when the church closed down, uh, um, four years, four and a half years ago. Oh, I didn't like online. It was so impersonal. For me, it was so impersonal. We must be involved with the people, with God's people. You are the church. And um, you see, if you're, if you're missing, they miss you. And you, you will miss them. You see, that there's, no, you, there's no loner when it comes to the church. There's no loner. There's no lone ranger. It doesn't work like that. Because you'll teach yourself and you'll get into error as well. Okay? So, let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 11, 12, and verse 28. And you might have read these scriptures before. If not, let's have a look. Verse 28. And God appointed those in the church, first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, and after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, administrations, and varieties of tongues. Okay? Right. But let's look what it says in 29. Are all prophets? Uh, are all prophets? Are all prophets? Paul asked that question twice to the Corinthian church. After all, are all teachers? Are all workers of miracles? Do all have gifts of healings? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? 
but earnestly desire the best gifts. Okay, and yet I show you a more excellent way. Okay, now, not everybody's a prophet, not everybody's an apostle, not everybody's a teacher, not everybody's a pastor, not everybody's an evangelist. That's the fivefold gift ministry, which I'll talk about in a moment. So, to be part of the church, you must be part of the body of Christ. It's the body of Christ. And over uh, universally, the, the born again churches get together, they are all the body of Christ, regardless of their name, regardless of um, what their name is, as long as they're born again, they're the family of God, they're our brothers and sisters. And we are one body, universally, one body. And um, I believe uh, from my last um, uh, facts I found was about two um, billion people of the world belong to a born again church. That's a lot out of eight point something billion population. Okay, so we want to build build up the church like they did in the book of Acts and they were added daily. And to do that you must evangelize. And to evangelize you must read your Bible because that's where you get the words to tell people about Jesus. And to, and to be an example of them going to church, take them to church and be their example. So let's have a look at Ephesians, shall we? The book of uh, Ephesians, where Paul spoke to the Ephesus church. Ephesians, chapter 4. And we'll have a look at, let's see, yes, verse 9. We'll start there. Now this, he ascended. Jesus went up. What does it mean but that he first descended into the lowest parts of the earth, that was when he was crucified and went into the tomb. He who descended is also the one, Jesus, who ascended far above all the heavens, that is, he might fill all things. And he himself gave, Jesus gave, some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors, and teachers. Why? Why did he do this? A very good reason. For the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying, the building up, uh, encouraging of the body of Christ, the body of Christ. Equipping. We need to be equipped for the different ministries that God has waiting for you, for you to use them and apply them in your life. Okay? So we must be equipped Till we come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God a, to a perfect man. The word perfect here means mature. Not perfect because none of us are perfect until we, we go to be with him. Uh, so to a mature man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children. We must grow up in the things of God. We must grow in, in God, the God of the Bible. No longer to be little kids. We are born, we get to age four, we go to kindergarten. And then right, and when we're five, we go to the school, the primary school. And then up to age 12, we go to high school or tech school. And then some go to the university. So they mature and grow and they learn and learn. And they grow up. Okay. So that's what we've got to do, is to grow up in God. No longer to be children, tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful body. So we have many cults in this world today who twist the scriptures, and if you don't know the scriptures, they'll just run you around with their little finger and you think, oh, that sounds godly, that sounds biblical, that sounds right. But you haven't read the Bible enough to understand that it's not true, that they've twisted it. So there's people out there who are deceiving people. All the cults are deceived, they're brainwashed. And if you don't know your scriptures, then how, how can you know the truth? And you'll be um, convinced by these people who have learned the scriptures and they're brainwashing of their leaders 
and, and they know those scriptures. And some of them have got other extra books in, in the Bible. And, and some of them have, have made their own Bible. Okay? And so they'll talk to you from that, and you think, well, that sounds right, but it's not. So you've got to know, and you've got to be um, built up. And this is what the fivefold ministry is for. But speaking the truth in love, you may grow up in all things into him, Jesus, who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share, its share, causes growth to the body for the edifying of itself in love. We need to be encouraged, we need to be edified, we need to be built up in the faith by men of God who know the word, who can teach the word, and they can encourage you to grow in the things of God so that you can be mature, no longer children, tossed to and fro by all these other doctrines that are rushing around this world and deceiving people. See, when they join these cults, they don't go to heaven when they pass on because they, they haven't spoken the truth. They haven't believed in the truth. And Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. They, they have a different Jesus. They have a different God. It's not the same as the God of the Bible. So it's important that you go to the church building, to a church service, and to various Bible studies, prayer meetings, and uh, be involved in there so that you can grow in the things of God through fellowship, okay? Through going to the church services. It's so important to do this. You can't grow properly otherwise. If you can imagine, if you, if you like when you got born and, so, and your parents didn't feed you enough and uh, you may become a midget, uh, you'll be dwarfed in your, your build um, and your intelligence was much less than others because you weren't taught properly. And so you are dwarfed in your experience in God. It's no good being a cripple in God. It's no good being a dwarf in God. It's no, no good being immature in God. You must be mature in God. And that's what the church fellowship does for you. So it's a, it's a must. It's a must to go to church every weekend. Now, the thing is this. You say, but I'm unable to. I'm crippled. I'm in a wheelchair. Well, I've seen wheelchairs in our church and seen people get healed. But you may not be able to, you may be so sick, uh, like physically unable to get there. So you've accepted, you've received Christ as your Saviour and Lord in previous years, maybe before the accident. Um, and you say, well, I can't get to church. It's impossible. Um, I hardly ever get out of my, my home. Uh, it's very hard for me. I'm very sick. I'm on all this medicine and stuff. And so it's not an excuse, you've got a reason. And yes, God understands that. He understands where you're at. And you read your Bible down, you talk to him, if you have any visitors, you share the word with them. And so you have faith in God. And yes, you will get to heaven, you are saved because you're physically unable to get to the church attending the church services. You're unable to. Um, then we, we come to people who backslide and they get out of fellowship. Uh, just uh, this week, I spoke to two people out of the many people I speak to about the good news. And these two people, um, one young lady said, well, sir, I'm, I'm not attending church uh, for quite a few years now and I'm drinking and smoking. I said, yes, but you received Christ as your Saviour several years ago. That's right. I said, all you've got to do is to rededicate your life back to the Lord. The thing is, do you really want to end up in heaven when you pass on? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, so then you must rededicate your life back to Christ. You, uh, I said to her, you are like a prodigal daughter. And we, most of us know the, the story of the prodigal son. Here he is. He's spent all his inheritance. He's got no more friends. He's been drunk. He's been with the women. He's been partying up big time, having a great time with all this money, something no money, no mates. And then he finds there's a famine hits the land, jobs hard to get, but he lands a job 
in a pig pen. This is like the end of a person's world, ending up in a pig pen with the urine and the manure of pigs and the mud and the slops. And the Bible says that he desired, he looked at the pea pods in all this mire and he desired to eat them. Now you've got to be in a pretty low place to be like that. Well, that's where you are if you're a backslider, you're you are a prodigal son or a prodigal daughter. That's where you are now. You're in the pig pen of life. But if you be like the prodigal son, come to your senses. Realize you sinned against the Holy God. And like the prodigal son, he hopped over the fence, said goodbye to the pigs, and started walking down the road all tattered and torn and bruised and, and dirty and filthy and stinking on pigs. And so he must have thought to himself, my dad will be very, very angry with me. He'll, he'll kick my butt and tell me to get lost. And uh, he won't, he'll dishonor me. But I see if I can get a job on the farm and be a worker for him. So he had all these thoughts, as you can imagine yourself, and uh, not knowing that his father for about a whole year he'd been away. Every day he went down to the front gate, looking down the road to see if his son was returning. This shows you the love and concern of the Father, God, okay? So this particular day, the Father goes down there and looks down the road and sees this little figure all hunched up, walking gingerly along the road towards him. And he looks, that's my son. And he runs down there, hugs this filthy, stinking young son of his, hugs him, embraces him, kisses him on the cheek, and puts rings on his finger, shoes on his feet, and throws a big party for him. And the other son, who had been a hard worker, was jealous and complained. But he said, your brother, my son, who was lost, now he is found. So there's more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents, the Bible says after that, than the 99 self-righteous. So here we see the importance of you coming back to the Father and, and not neglecting the assembling of yourself in the church services anymore. And he will forgive you of all your sins, of all your backsliding, of all the sins you've done, no matter how bad they were and how many times you did them, he's a forgiver. He's a God of mercy, of forgiveness, of salvation, and you will get to heaven. So, before I close the teaching on the importance of going to church regularly every week, okay? I want to say this to you. Are you saved? Are you sure you're safe? If you die tonight, would you be absolutely sure that you go to heaven? So you might say, well, I'm not sure. Mm, well, I hope so. Well, maybe I think so. Well, you've got to make sure because it's too late afterwards. When you take your last breath and you're not saved, you haven't followed Jesus Christ for a certain time of your life. You haven't. You followed some religion, some idolatrous religion, you followed some philosophy, or you've been an atheist or agnostic, and you've just been doing your own thing, then the Bible says, repent and be converted, so that all your sins shall be washed away, and times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. That's Acts chapter 3, verse 10. So you must repent and repent to repent means to go in the opposite direction you're going, making a 180 degrees turn of your life. Stop doing those things that you did to please the devil and start doing the things that please God. So when you come to Christ, you confess him as your Lord and Saviour. You, you speak to him in a prayer and you ask him to forgive you. You admit that you're a sinner. So if you really want to make sure you're going to heaven, then that's what God requires of you. God's way of salvation is through Jesus Christ, not through religion. This is not about religion, it's about relationship. And if you don't have a relationship with God, that's what he wants for you. 
then you can't get to heaven. Is your religion or your philosophy or your unbelief really worth going to hell for for eternity? Of course not. So come to your senses. Right now, the Bible says to come, now is the day of salvation, now is the acceptable time, Second Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2. So now is the appropriate time, it's the right time, it's the time God will forgive you. So if you want to make sure, really sure, 100% sure, you go to heaven, please pray this prayer with me from your mouth and mean it in your heart. So please follow me. Dear God, have mercy on me, a sinner. I'm sorry for sinning against you, a holy God, but I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross and rose again for all my sins on the third day. I repent for my sins right now and I willingly turn away from my idolatrous religion that cannot forgive my sins nor save me from hell. To follow only you, my Lord Jesus, this I promise you for the rest of my life. Please make me the person you want me to be. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen? Amen. Amen. And if you prayed that prayer, then you are now a new person in Christ. The Bible says if anybody is in Christ, they're a new person. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. You're a new person. All your sins are washed away. Your secret sins, every sin you've ever done, and God will no longer hold any sin against you, the Bible says several times. And you're a new person. So start doing the things that please God. Don't go back and do a lot. If whatever religion you work, don't go back to that church because it takes you down to hell. So go to the born again church and grow in the things of God, as I've been teaching this morning. Okay? So start to read a Bible. If you don't have a Bible, a Bible or a Bible book, a Bible book like this, you don't have one, then you can download one in your cell phone. Okay? Free, free offline download. And start reading one chapter a day in the Gospel of John in the New Testament. It takes three or four minutes to read one chapter and it cleanses you and God speaks to you. And every day you read the Bible, your faith in God gets stronger and stronger. But every day you don't read the Bible, your faith gets weaker and weaker, and you can't get into heaven. There's no non-Bible reading, non-fellowshipping Christians uh, in heaven. Okay? So there's four things you need to do. Read your Bible, talk to God, tell others about Jesus, and go to a born-again church and grow in the things of God. So we've covered the first one, reading your Bible. Okay? Now, second one is... You talk to God the Bible way. Never do this as some religion does. Never, it's called the upside down cross. It's a, it's a curse sign. Okay, it, it mocks and insults the cross of Jesus, the beautiful cross of Jesus, our Savior. And so then start to point people to Jesus. We mustn't allow our loved ones to go to hell. We must share with them the good news and leave nothing out. We must tell them that God didn't make religion, that sinful man did, and they've twisted the Bible to suit their own teachings to deceive the people. Religion is a deception. There's 4,200 plus religions in the world today. And so if you follow religion, you go to hell. If you follow Jesus, you go to heaven. So now you've prayed that prayer, the promise you've made to God, you keep your promise and he'll keep his. Okay, it's an agreement you've made with God. If you don't keep the promise, you can't get to heaven. So point people to Jesus. It's the most loving thing you can ever do is to point somebody to Jesus. And then go to the born again church and grow in the things of God. So now you know what to do. Um, just do it, as the Nike ad says. Just do it. Okay? And okay. welcome to, to God's forever family. You've just made the best choice of your entire life, whether you are five or 105 in between. It's the best choice you've ever made in your entire life. You're now saved, you're forgiven, and you're heading for heaven. So when you pass on, that's where your home for eternity will be. But all those who deny Jesus, all those who don't receive Christ as Saviour and Lord, they will go to hell for eternity. And eternity is a long time to be wrong. So God bless you. God bless you real good. Because God is a good God. He sent His Son uh, as a, your Saviour. And He saved you. You're forgiven and you're going to heaven. So God bless you real good. Have a good God-blessed day. Amen? Um, amen. Tamaka.